What's up, everybody? This is Jimmy with Trading Decoded. It is April 29th, 2024, 4.01 in the afternoon. Markets closed. And, uh, well, today was was a decent moving day. Uh, there were some, some parts of the chart that were not worth trading. There were great opportunities both up and down and down and up to make great money. I myself only took one trade today. Uh, I was a 75% winner, although I got out where I wanted to. It ended up getting up to being worth 113%, and it happened pretty early in the morning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what we were looking for, why we were looking for it, and, uh, and a couple other trades after that one that ended up uh, just being based on support and resistance. Really, That's, that's really all I'm, I'm trading, guys. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and launch a chart. And start with spy. So we had our pre-market lines. Let me let me make this a little bit uh, cleaner real quick here. Okay, we had our pre-market blue lines here. We stayed within that range for the most part. And quite honestly, I wasn't excited about the pre-market chart at all. Um, and because of that, my call put scenario lines are pretty pretty wide considering what we normally um, what we normally look for. Okay, now. What we wanted to see was a close above 510.15 for calls looking for a move up to 510.61. Okay, now that's about a 50 cent move, which would be great. However, the majority of this candle took out most of the move. So we did have people who got into it aggressively because we breached the line. But for me, I wanted the candle closed because we have no price action above that line on the day. So for me, I was trying to be a little bit more conservative. Likewise, the reason for puts up here was talked about as being a counter trend trade. But what I want to show you guys is that SPY broke and ran to resistance. Q's struggled to get through their resistance. Okay. It was also at this time that ADD started to print a little bit smaller candles with wicks showing up on top. Now, <clears throat> this is one of those trades that feels good if you're looking for puts for several reasons. Number one, Qs are at a solid level of resistance. Number two, SPY was at or just above resistance in this particular case. And number three, and probably most important, was the fact that if we got in at this orange line on the cues, any candle close above that orange line would be the stop for us. So you get in with the ability to get out if this resistance fails without losing much. Okay, and again, ADD shortly thereafter started to take a tumble to the downside, which allowed us to stay in this trade a little bit longer. But what we were looking for was the cues to make it down to their pre-market midline, okay, which SPY did. And ADD was still printing down. Cues still looked like they had a little bit of move, movement to the downside. And it was at that point where I told everybody, I'm aiming for 509.49. Uh, we got down there. So from up here to down here, all right? Um, and uh, that's where I, I personally got out of the trade there. Now, what's unfortunate was as I was getting out, I told everybody else, hey, there's really no good reason to get out of this trade. You should be in, in enough profit by now that you don't have to stomach, you know, losing the potential of losing money unless you let this thing get way too far away from you. But slide your stops down, tighten them up, and oh, maybe we can make it a little bit lower. Hopefully 509.31, which is our put line. We breached that here and we started to move down. Now, what's crazy about this is this white line I added later in the day. So I'll show you where that came from. Obviously, we were hoping to get 508.82. But what was happening at that moment when we were in the spy trade? I wasn't, but for the people who were in it, guys, right here, look at this cues right down to support. Not that you have to get out there, but every time we hit these lines, we tell everybody, guys, tighten up your stops. We don't know which one of these are gonna hold, which one is not, we don't know. So protect yourself in the event that one of them does. Hope for the event that they don't, if you're in puts. So the reason it stopped and we put a circle there was because the cues literally went down and kissed that little support line right there. They bounce off of it, pull back, 
Here's another beautiful trade. We're in a downtrend, clearly. We pull back to resistance on Qs and SPY. What are we looking for? A move back down to support on the Qs. As you can see here, entry, exit. Exit here if you wanna get out of a SPY level. But we were hoping for Qs to make it back down to their support and really open for Qs to make a new low of day, which they didn't do. Okay, so we move up. We get through this resistance here. We're at the pink line on SPY. We start chopping around. We put in a higher low right here. And this is important because when people are asking me, Jimmy, when would you buy puts again? The minute we see this, puts come off the table for me. Puts are off the table now. Well, would you buy calls? No, not until we get above the pink line on SPY. Okay. Now, because we're coming off of a higher low, I do expect this resistance to not be as strong as it once was. Okay? And you could see this all the time, guys. Watch for higher lows and then wait to see if the resistance, once we close above it, is strong or weaker than what you once thought. I'm telling you, if you can get used to reminding yourself higher lows are bad for puts, it will help you stay out of trades that don't typically go in your favor, okay? I'm all about buying pullbacks at resistance, but not off of a higher low. Buyers are stronger. Remember, the buyers couldn't stop us from getting down to this level again where we know buyers exist, but we move up, buyers are pushing up, sellers step in, push us down, and then the buyers prevent us from moving all the way back down to the, to the support down there. This is an indicator that buyers are getting stronger. Don't, don't fight against that. The minute you see that, hesitate or skip the trade altogether, okay? I told everybody if we close above 432.37, I expect uh, Qs to go up to 432.70. It's a 35 cent move. If you wanna take that, awesome, okay? Just make sure just make sure SPY is above the pink line. We don't like to mess with this pink line, okay? So as luck would have it, Qs close above that line right here at 1010. Qs make it to resistance at 1015, okay? 1015, actually we were close to it at 1015. It made it actually to it to it at 1021, which would have squeezed you a little bit more out of SPY anyway, okay? 1021 would have gotten you here. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? We're coming off higher lows. We get two resistance through resistance. We're expecting it to go up to the next resistance, just like you see it here. Okay. Now what's happening here? This is a lower high. Okay. I'm sorry. This is a, a, a lower low in relation to this, followed by a higher low. Okay. So we, we had broken support, not in a hurry to buy puts yet. Okay. And, um, this is for anybody who got into the trade at the call line, by the way. Call line was uh, was this white 5, 10, 15. Worked out once, worked out twice, okay? As long as we stay above the yellow line with candle closes, you're hoping for the next target high. You got that. Um, then we got into a, an area which wasn't really exciting to trade. Um, yes, we were putting in lower highs, lower lows, but these pullbacks were, were kind of brutal. Um, not very fun. Um, and then we get to a point where I draw on the Q's chart and I said, Hey, look, so many people want to know where to buy puts. And I was trying to explain to them that I try and find more than one reason to justify a trade. Meaning just because we break this trend line, doesn't mean I'm going to buy puts. So what I told everybody is, not only do I want to break a trend line, but I'd like to be, low, be below a level of support before I would consider puts. Okay, so we didn't get any of that here. But then I started to draw all the lines of support that in resistance that existed within this red box, which I've since deleted because it drives my, my brain nuts. And I said to everybody, guys, as long as we're in this, this red box, I wouldn't take any trades. That's just me. Okay, where would I be interested in taking trades? 
either out of the bottom of that red box or below this white line. Pick your poison, whichever one it is, okay? So I was at lunch for a good portion of this. I came back from lunch. We got out of the red box to the upside. <clears throat> we were hoping for a move up to the blue line. Above the blue line, your next resistance would have been basically right here, okay? At uh, 433.46, we didn't make it up there. Oh well, once you get into profit, you can move your stops up so that you don't give up too much of it. Then we started to come down. And Jimmy, would you buy puts here? Guys, I don't trade later in the day. My style of trading doesn't work later in the day, okay? And the reason is, is because I would have to ignore the idea that support and resistance levels exist a lot more than they did in the morning. Now, I can't undo that. I have so much faith in value in support resistance lines that to have the, the, the 15 lines of support that existed in here and trade like they don't, I can't do it. I can't. Okay, so, but I did say no trades in that zone. If we get out of the bottom of that, we'd be hoping for the move down to 430.92. This is when I drew, um, actually, this is where I drew this line because everybody was saying, hey, Jimmy, um, if we broke, where is the next window that you'd be interested in puts? I said, well, if we can get below 431.35, which is the last support on the day at the time, I'd like to see us get down to 430.92. Now, we didn't close below it here, breached it, but didn't close below it. We pulled back, hit resistance. Guess what else happened here at this time? Not that I was taking it. I wasn't even here at the moment. Um, Qs and SPY pulled back to resistance. Okay, right here. Both of them pulled back to resistance, to resistance. Now, at the time, you'd be hoping for resistance back down to support down here because that's what it had done over here. But you were lucky enough to get a crazy three o'clock handle, which sent you way down south. But guess what? And more importantly, and again, I wasn't here for any of this. I have to pick my kids up from school at 2.40 on, on Mondays, okay? So I wasn't here. Stop ignoring the cues, okay? They are a valuable, valuable asset to trading spy, your futures, whatever it is that you're looking at. Because as I tell people all day long, first of all, I don't trade against the cues. Second of all, I respect the levels of the cues immensely. So if I'm in a position here and we're coming down to each one of these lines, I am considering taking profits. And if I'm not gonna take profits, I'm gonna move my stops down in case it does something like this. Fact of the matter is, we don't know which one of those lines is going to hold a support or resistance for that matter. Okay. We know what it happens at the time. How far does it pull back? How far are you willing to let it pull back? All of these things. But I do want to show you, okay, how strong every one of these lines, except for this white one right here, was drawn at. 8.30 this morning, one hour before the market opened, one hour before the market opened, okay? Solid top, solid bottom. Now, later in the day, we made it down lower, but man, if you were in calls at open and you just respected some of these cues lines, you could have locked in a good amount of profit. If you were in puts and you start breaking through these lines, just know which one you're going to get out at. I didn't even make it all the way down to the bottom. Told everybody while we were up here, guys, I'm kind of interested in puts here. Why, Jimmy, why? Because had the queues closed above this orange line, I would have bought calls here because SPY was over that line. I said, but I'm not trading against the queues, and until the queues close above that, I'm not taking a call up here. We missed the majority of the move because this candle that closed above our call line was too, too far gone. I'm not buying the top like that. Okay. As we're chopping around, struggling to move higher, ADD starting to show some wicks on top, cues with wicks. I mean, uh, spy with wicks on top. So guys, I know we're nowhere near our put line, but I'm liking puts here. Doesn't mean you got to get into them. I'm just telling you what I like. Entry, exit, I ended up getting in, and this is another pet peeve of mine. Personal, it's a personal issue. 
if you get in because of the cues, get out because of the cues. I got in because of the cues and I got out because of a spy line. Now that spy line was a strong level of support in pre-market and that's why I, I wanted to respect it. As you can see, pre-market midline here, once we got through the, the high line, didn't do much in the way of support except for earlier in the day. But the last time we came down to it, we kind of kind of got through it and you know whatever. So I was looking for this line. Once we got there, um, I just marketed it out of the trade. Okay, and then reminded everybody, hey, you don't have to get out because I did. You know, everything still looks like there's might be more potential to the downside. And if the Qs make it down to their next line, you're going to make a lot more money. So from here to here, went from 75% win to 113, 114%. So it's a big difference, but that was a great trade. But the point I'm making is, these lines get respected on the queues enough to, to have them side by side next to SPY. And uh, if you get in because of the queues breaking resistance or support and you get out because they're making it down to some resistance and support, you can make good money. Well, Jimmy, why don't you trade the queues? We've had this discussion, but I'll tell you again. The reason I don't trade the queues is because I've got an entire community of people who are trading prop accounts with futures. They're trading SPY contracts, they're trading SPX, all based on the information that I'm sharing on this microphone right here. So I can't switch to the cues. I reference the cues throughout the entire day. Some people even trade the cues based on how often I reference the cues, or they're trading my lines. Okay. The point is, is that support and resistance is critical to trading. And if you can learn how to stack the probabilities of how to use them in your favor, you can have a much, much funner time, more fun time of trading or with trading or be more profitable or more consistent. All right. So with that, we're going to wrap it up. I hope you all found some useful information in this video. If you did, please like, share and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. If you like join our Discord community, well, we'd love to have you. Uh, first week is completely free. And if you don't like what you get for that week, don't pay for anything. Just, you know, you could stay there. You don't have to leave, um, but it doesn't have to cost you anything to come to find out what we're about. Maybe it's for you. Maybe it's not. If it's not, thanks for stopping by. I do hope you learned something while you're here. If you do enjoy what you get for that free week, consider becoming a paying member. If you'd like to do that, there are additional perks for doing so, one of which we will be having tomorrow, which is a live charting session. We do them every Tuesday at 8.30 in the morning, so I can give my paying members all of the stuff, all the information that's up here in my head about how and where these lines come from that I draw every single day. We do it every week. We have an audiobook library that's full of, of trading books and, and, and psychological books and things like that. Um, and of course, live trade rooms, uh, both with a 920 uh, trading strategy and with support and resistance with myself. So, you know, jump in there if you'd like. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. And I hope you all had a fantastic day. Till tomorrow, I love you guys.